You know what this is? This is deer rump roast, also known as venison. There are two reasons people don't like to eat deer. One, it's tough, and two, it has this funny aftertaste. So come on in close, we're gonna try and take care of both issues in today's video, and we're also gonna use a brand new meat thermometer that was sent to the show, and I'll show you that in a second. But let's take care of this first, come here. Okay, if you look carefully, there's this silver skin that's on, this, on the, the meat. You wanna just grab that and, and rip that off. You can use a knife to cut under it. Sometimes like on the, uh, the back of the deer, it's a little bit thicker. This all has to come off. It's like a membrane, okay? Take your time and remove as much of it as you can. You don't want any of this. Now that you've gotten rid of most of the silver area, it's gonna help let this be tenderized uh, when you smoke it or however you cook it, pressure cook it. It's gonna allow it to become more tender. And you just don't want that anyway. Whoever you buy it from, have them clean it. Or if it's your own, make sure you clean it. Use a filet knife, it works great. Next thing we gotta do. Now we're gonna get rid of the gamey taste. Before you cook your venison, you need to soak your venison water. This came from a friend who got it from a hunter. When you kill an animal, the blood soaks into the meat. So you have that metallic, that nasty taste, okay? What you need to do is soak it overnight, 24 hours in a bag of water, in a container of water. This water right now, as you can see, is pretty clear. When I bring it out, I expect it to have more red in it. Look how much blood came out. That's all red water there, guys. Swish, swish, swish. You see it? So I'm gonna drain this out and I'm gonna bring it back here and we're gonna do more to it. We're not done yet. And we're making this quick and dirty. So I have no idea measurements, but I'll make estimations when I'm done. Throw a little Worcestershire sauce in there. Do about half a cup of red wine, half a cup of balsamic vinegar. All right, so I'm gonna put some barbecue rub into this marinade. And when I have a seasoning that I keep in the closet, throw a paper towel in there to keep moisture away from your seasoning. It keeps the seasoning from sticking together. Get it all mixed in there. You're wet and you're dry together. There we go. Oh yeah, plenty of room. Plenty of room in there, look at that. Now not only are we doing a venison roast video, but I'm also gonna slide in a product review here. It's a company called Inkbird. I've showed you other four probe monitors that are around the $60 range. This is around the $30 range. That's why I'm excited to try this one out. If this one works as good as the one I've been using on the show for years, then I might just switch to this or recommend you guys get this one instead. Oh wow, there it is. Look how tiny that is. All right, so there it is. Oh yeah, download the app. Okay, so there's an app, I'll have that on my phone by tomorrow. There you go. Okay, so we're outside now, the next morning. As you can see, all my grills are covered, except this one. I'm using my silverback on the patio because it's creepy out, man. It's, it's windy. It was like almost 80 degrees yesterday and in winter. We had one hot day and then the cold's coming back in. You hear that? That's just the wind. But it's kind of creepy. So you're not seeing double. That one's my buddy's, Thomas. That's the one I started the video with, and then I did mine. And I decided to make mine the same way. So we got both probes in. It's gonna be awesome. Both are showing. I got a temperature of 41 and 43. 41 on his and 43 on mine. I think we're doing 225 today. 225, there it is. That took no time. I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out. There it is. Let's take my marinade and I'm gonna cook it so it's healthy to use. I can brush it back on the meat. Once you bring it to a boil, it kills any bacteria that may be 
in there for the raw meat, but I'm not just gonna bring it to a boil. I'm gonna try to reduce it by half and make it thicken more like a glaze. So, so about halfway through the cook, I'm gonna baste it. First one's 115 degrees right now, second one is 122. When that 122 reaches 130, it's 135, I'm gonna yank it out and run to the refrigerator. I wanna stop the cooking. You don't wanna overcook your venison. You wanna take a peek? I'm just gonna take a peek. I know you're never supposed to open this, but I'm gonna take a peek. Ready, here we go. Look at that. Oh yeah, do some steaks in there too. <laughs> All right, almost done. I'll show you really quick, I'm gonna go baste this. Look at how thick I made it. Look at that. I cooked that down on the stove. I'm gonna open this up. Yep, I have to. Gotta do what I gotta do. Start basting this goodness onto. Look at that. It's like it's not even moving. Look at it, it's like paint. I'm painting it. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness, there we go. Is that gorgeous? Is that a gorgeous piece of meat right there? So here we go. You ready? This is my favorite part. The first slice. Now you guys, medium, rare, and rare is a way to cook venison roast. You go further than that, it's like bison. And it will get dried out and toughen up. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is super tender. You want to slice it super thin. You can make sandwiches with it. You can put it next to mashed potatoes and asparagus. You can do whatever you want with this. All right, guys, that's it. Inkbird, thank you for the meat thermometer. It worked flawlessly. It's half the price of the iGrill Weber, guys. I'll have a link down below. Get one of those. If I find something even better than that, I'll show you. But right now, Inkbird's got it going on. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.